on the ready to go. amazing parts about being an artist is that we're able to express ourselves a little differently than most people you know we all go through the exact same situations in life we deal with the exact same highs and lows stresses the beauty of it is that you know for me specifically i can sit here and take those emotions take those feelings and turn it into a song and then share it with the world and for me that's really just one of the greatest feelings that i've ever had to be honest to have even just one person come up to me and say hey you know i listened to the song and it really changed my life or even not even that just hey i i really vibe with this song i i like it i like this aspect of it and to hear that just makes me feel so good So here I am on the tail end, tail end of mixing this song. This is this is a long time in the making. So the brief story behind this one, Swinging on Love, I literally wrote this song uh, at the end of 2004, just after I released Personal Invitation. And I loved it so much, and I just couldn't figure out what I wanted to do with it. So I just held on to it for all these years. Uh, you know, listened to it every once in a while, just kept it in the, kind of on the back burner. And then um, John came over one day and I was like, hey man, I got this song, I want you to hear it. And I let him hear it. And he instantly came up with the hook and he started singing it here on the spot. Actually, there I think there's some video Steph took uh, on her phone. I'll, I'll, put, I'll put some of the footage in. Uh That's what I gotta do. Yeah. Been swinging on love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what the I need to do. The rest of this was fine, I thought. Been swinging on love. That's what I need to do. Okay, so go ahead and punch me. I'm just gonna punch you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Been swinging on love. Fuck! Ah, <laughs> God damn it! I'm sorry. Quick punch was off. I was looping shit. Dude, I'm gonna okay. kill you today. I'm okay. gonna kill you. No okay. way. All right, here we go. Been swinging on love. Ah, I didn't get it. What? Really? I don't think I did. Been swinging on love. That's why it's got to drop down at the end. Been swinging on love. Yes, yes, that's exactly, exactly. Okay. Been swinging on love. Yeah. That one was better, right? Yeah, let's listen to that. Okay. I feel like that first note could be better. Been swinging on love. I just gotta slow. I just got to slow it down and smooth it out. Dude, let me just record you without the music. Okay. You're fucking nailing it every time without the music. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Go ahead. Been swinging on love. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That might be the trick, dude. There's something throwing me off. Don't tell anybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got the vibrato at the yeah, end. Yeah, really did. You hit it. Let's hear that. <laughs> yeah, there it is. There, there it is. was. Okay. 
and we just started to work on the chorus, and the chorus came together, and it started to really happen, and I was really excited about it. And then the big thing happened was when I got the Roland D50. That is what changed everything on the song. Cause the song is the song is this originally. Right, and then once I got the D50, man, everything just really came together. I added a cool uh, harp. I used the the digital native patch. On um, that's one of the most iconic sounds on the D50. Uh, Mark tree and some bells. It just, man, the whole thing really, really came together. And it just really, really came together after that. Added some soundtrack. Honestly, just some extremely beautiful parts. And I, I really just think it complemented what I originally had. So it's really a hybrid. So it's really a hybrid between what I wrote in 2004 and then what I have now. Yeah, it just really came together. John laid down the uh, the hook, and that was just really took the song really to the next level. It's actually a, uh, a mix. It's John and I both. I wanted to try to do this kind of uh, almost like a spoken word, not necessarily rapping, but sort of like Andre 3000 kind of style of just talking it out, sort of going in rhythm, going out of rhythm, kind of bouncing back and forth, going around. Of course, the cadence and the, the timbre of, the, of, of how I'm saying it, because I'm swinging on love, right? I'm overcoming. We're, we, we're, we're happy that we're we're, we've overcome all this bullshit, and we're now happy. We're swinging on love. We're feeling the love. So I don't want to sound sad, but I'm. I also want to emphasize and and let everyone hear like it's because of all this stuff, you know, that got me to the point to where now I'm swinging on love. So it's kind of it's tough. I've done like five or six different vocal takes, all in different cadences to try to figure out the best way to come about of saying it. So. I've just been working on it. And here I am. I was bouncing it out. I was totally done with it. But now I'm hearing certain lines that don't make sense because I changed some of the words. So I'm going back, kind of redoing some things. Check, 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 check. Yeah. The day-to-day -day struggle in life making me want to not put up much of a fight. Yeah. Like when the punch is gonna let up, mornings at 5 a.m., I still struggle to get up. Yeah, see, I like that much better already. We're getting somewhere. Yeah, like when the punch is gonna let up, mornings at 5 a.m., I still struggle to get up. Who really wants that rough cut cussing and fighting? We Mortal Kombat are street fighting. Memories print on 11 by 7 on paper thin. Dunder Mifflin. I think uh, the biggest problem I have is that I don't like some of the rhythms that I did in here. So I'm just, whatever, just redo some of it. Hitchhiking through the night, blind with a backpack full of lemons and clems, limelight. Hitchhiking through the night, blind with a backpack full of lemons and clems, limelight. On paper thin, 
paper thin, Dunder Mifflin. Hitchhiking through the night, wider the backpack for the lovers and clowns line up. Dunder Mifflin. Hitchhiking through the night. Hitchhiking through the night, blind with a backpack full of lemons and clems, limelight. There you go. I like the rhythm on that one much better. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the song was a lot longer. It didn't have this breakdown, didn't have all this extra stuff in the end, and didn't have all the string parts in the end. Obviously didn't have all the harmonies. Added a whole bunch of harmonies at the end, some doublers, four-person, four-part harmony at the end on what we're saying here. Super huge. Just totally awesome. Just really came together. Yeah, the day to day struggle in life making me wanna not put up much of a fight. Yeah, like when the punch is gonna let up. Mornings at 5 a.m., I still struggle to get up. Couple Skate is, uh, has been a long time in the making. Uh, my last studio release was in 2012 with Nothing's Forever. Right or wrong, I'm kind of a perfectionist, which gets in the way of a lot of things. It definitely hinders the release schedule, but the reason really that it takes me so long to release music like this is because I just want it to be right in my mind. I want to be at peace with the music. And it takes me a long time to write music because I'm I'm very emotional driven. I'm very influenced by feelings, you know, how I feel, the emotions that I'm dealing with. When I'm having a rough day or I'm frustrated or I'm depressed, I'll jump in and I'll write some music to, to get that out, to express those feelings and the emotions. And when I'm feeling good, when I'm feeling happy, when I'm feeling the love, I'll jump in and do the same thing. I don't ever force music. And so that's why it takes me a long time to put together not just songs, but a whole album in general. I'm constantly writing music. I never stop writing music, even though I may not be releasing stuff, maybe a year or two, I never stop composing. I literally have a hard drive or hard drives just full of songs, literally hundreds of songs that will probably never see the light of day. Maybe they will in the future, but for me, it's it's like going through a mood or going through an emotion, you know, when you feel something and I write a song and that's just that moment in time. It's really, really quite beautiful, to be honest. It's very much like a picture photograph, you know, or a scent that you can smell and it takes you to that spot. Same thing with, with music and audio will always take you to that spot. And that was just, you know, a moment in time that you that you had that you can remember and reminisce about.
how I dance in the club. I <laughs> walk that's, in. That's how like, you get... Oh shit, Jay's here, and I just walk in. First thing I do, they come over like, Mr. Heine, would you like some drinks? I'm like. That's how you get all the ladies. And they're like, oh, he's doing his dance. <laughs> and then I just start doing the hit. So when I was getting closer to thinking about doing some sort of album or EP, I was looking at this big, massive body of work that I had composed over the last two to three years, really. And I found that I was either writing songs that were very aggressive, sharper edged, more angry, more frustrated, uh, more songs uh, about anger and depression, or it was the complete polar opposite. I was writing songs like what you have here on Couplescape. I was bouncing back and forth almost like you know someone who's bipolar here i one day i'm at my lowest of low and then the next day i have overcome that and i'm like you know swinging on love or you know feels right was was a song that came together very very quickly and all the verses came together all the instrumentation came together so fast so quick it just flowed out of me i was feeling good you could tell in the song you could hear it you can feel it and it's just such a complete package and pretty much every other time I've released an album, I've created a whole package where you kind of get the roller coaster effect and every album is a story, you know, from start to end. You, you ride up the roller coaster, the ramp, and then you go down and back up and twist and turn. And it tells a story throughout where when you end the album, you know, there's a recap on the end as well. So I usually like to do that. I like to give people a journey. I don't like to just have it be one or two good songs. I want to try to have a, a complete package. But when I was looking at the body of work that I had composed over the last three years, I realized that the songs are so different. There's a, a, a huge contrast on the, the tone, the feel, the emotion. Everything about them was completely opposite. And I tried to put them together and listen to it as a complete album about 10 to 12 songs and it just didn't work i felt and i i really couldn't get that to to work right so the decision was made to cut the album up in half and uh, do just an ep and i'm really happy with this decision i talked a lot about it with with john who came over and did bass and vocals throughout the album and we decided that doing it in a small ep style would be much better and also i think it's smart because i feel for, for whatever reason people's attention spans are getting shorter and shorter and doing something maybe smaller like this would be a little bit easier to digest and take in even though personally i'm totally fine with doing a, a full length 10 or 12 song album i'll do more in the future i'm sure but uh, at this stage i think this is just a really good time to introduce an ep i've never done an ep before so this is really exciting for me
What I really wanted to express was the journey, the celebration of love, celebration of happiness, you know, the achievement of becoming and overcoming. And I think that's really important with this as it's a throwback. There's lots of elements to music that I grew up listening to that I'm very passionate about. New Jack Swing, R&B, funk, pop, hip hop, it's all in there. And I feel that it is such a, a great representation of styles of music that heavily influenced me, that I love, that I can inject into this new EP. And I, I really am just extremely proud of it. And I, I hope everyone can listen to it and take it in their own way and reflect and be inspired by it and relate to it in their own way because everyone's going to hear this it's going to hit you differently and that again is the beauty of music is that you all take it in differently you'll create your own memories you'll have your own thoughts and visions with this and i hope that this will continue to last forever way, way long after i'm gone that's for sure and i just think that's a really beautiful thing in the 90s, courtesy of your boy Jay Heine, with a one take hake on a sexy hook, you can't learn this in a book, back then we'd shake hips to big hits, with a 12 sec anti-skip, disc mid on my hip, so tight in my hill figure and not a cut, lace your skates, hit the ring, I'll follow ya, I know that you know we can do